All right, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday evening. Um, my name is Mackenzie. I am a volunteer for NACAC, and I'm just gonna go through a couple of announcements before I turn it over to Robert. So um, make sure that you are signing up for more of these sessions. OWU is a great school and you're gonna hear a lot of great information, but there are plenty of other schools for you to learn information from. You can check out our schedule and register for those on NACAC's website. There will be a recording available of this presentation as well as all of the other presentations. So if you're really interested in a couple of schools but your schedule doesn't allow for you to sign up for those, you can also view those recordings in the next couple of weeks on NACAC's website. Your cameras and microphones are turned off for this presentation so we can't see your faces. However, you are able to submit any questions that you may have through that Q&A box. If we don't have enough time to get to all of your questions, don't worry. Robert is going to receive your contact information as well as any questions that you have and he will be able to reach out to you after the presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Robert to start his presentation about OWU. Very good. Uh, thanks, Mackenzie. Uh, so I am Rob Walton. I'm Associate Director of Admission at Ohio Wesleyan University. Uh, you'll commonly hear folks uh, on campus refer to ourselves as OWU. Uh, number one, it's more fun to say. Uh, number two, um, it's easier to say, right, than uh, Ohio Wesleyan University or uh, even OWU. And I believe that we are the only uh, OWU uh, out there. So, uh, OWU is a small liberal arts college. We are roughly 1,500 students. Uh, we have over 75 majors, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, obviously, we're based in the state of Ohio, but we're in the center of the state, and we're in suburban Columbus in northern Delaware County. So Delaware, Ohio is about 25 minutes north of the state capital of downtown Columbus. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that too, but I think that our um, size and location and proximity to other places uh, is really an advantage for our students. Uh, and the slides that I'm going to share with you today are the top 10 questions that we typically get uh, about OWU. The picture you're looking at right now is uh, an aerial drone shot of the campus. Uh, right above the exclamation point there is Slocum Hall. That's the admission office. And I, I should tell you that we are uh, open for business, shall we say. So our students are on campus and attending in-person classes. Um, uh, things do look obviously a little bit different right now with the uh, extra sanitizing stations and we have some canopies right in the middle of campus so that uh, uh, larger classes can still meet in person but outside. Uh, and certainly everybody is wearing masks and so while it's definitely a unique time uh, on campus, our, 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 our campus is thriving uh, and the best that we can. And our students are really doing a great job at um, doing what we need to do in order for that to continue. So we're proud of that. Um, I think the first question that I tend to get is, you know, just what makes OWU stand out? What makes us distinctive? You know, what, what is it that I can say when I graduate that I'm gonna gain from my experience there? And uh, that's an easy answer. The OWU connection, think big, go global, get real. That's our signature experience at Ohio Wesleyan. It, it's available to all of our students and uh, the vast majority of our students do take advantage. If you think of it as uh, almost like a one-stop shop for research, internships, study abroad, study away, uh, it includes your academic experience, your extracurricular experience, and all of those external opportunities that I just referenced. Um, and while those do all have their own directors and departments, they're under the umbrella of the OWU connection. So that uh, the, these aren't places, these aren't things that should be siloed uh, across your campus. These are things that are part of your full academic experience. And they're not limited, as I said, to any individual student. So uh, I think the first piece of that is the think big component, right? Uh, this is this is a, a team taught class. So we have interdisciplinary programs. That's a big part of the experience at OWU. And you're, you're gonna be, you know, thinking big through these challenges. So 
This is our, uh, the, the gentleman on the left there is Professor Craig Jackson, who teaches math. And then the woman in the center there, that is Professor Amy Downing, who teaches zoology classes. And this class is actually exploring how mathematical modeling can be used to better understand marine ecosystems. So taking a, taking a, a subject and applying it to a real tangible world experience. So, you know, getting cutting edge research. This is Landry Collins. She actually worked in the admissions office uh, during her time at OWU. Just a, a very recent grad. This is her last summer in the summer of 19. And she was at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, a world renowned facility where she was conducting research on how to better uh, understand how to care for babies that were born with underdeveloped hearts. So what stands out about this to me, uh, she wasn't in med school yet. Uh, she wasn't, uh, you know, uh, in her PhD program. This is a student, an undergraduate student uh, who was getting ready to prepare herself for uh, life after college. And what a remarkable experience to be able to do that. Here's another example of that. Noah Spicer, Ahmed Hamed, the two gentlemen to the left of your screen. Uh, they visited Northern Ireland. They were exploring conflicts. Uh, they were exploring, uh, you know, different um, sectarian conflicts uh, across the globe. And their picture here with the, uh, the man who inspired the research, he's also the deputy head of the government of Ireland. His name is Simon Coveney. And uh, so he was an inspiration for them. They had an opportunity to travel to listen to him talk, uh, and they got to meet with him uh, personally. Here's just a, a great example of somebody who really took, ex uh, took advantage of the OWU connection. Raisa graduated last year, majors in French and politics. I mean, eight different OWU connection experiences took her around the globe, you know, South Africa, France, Mexico, Paris, uh, in the Midwest here in Chicago. So she was all over and now she's in grad school in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, two thirds of our students do go global. I think one of the things to point out is that uh, while certainly we're going through this pandemic together, uh, I think we all realize that this is temporary. And so when you're thinking about what's next and you're thinking about what's permanent, uh, it's really the idea that, you know, companies, uh, enterprises, they wanna hire folks who have that global vision. And so um, that's the experience we want students to have. And we want you to be able to take that with you when you graduate. Uh, this is a picture actually of our island biology class who in the last two weeks of the course went to the Galapagos, and that is definitely on my bucket list of places to visit. Or John Keller, he's a student athlete at uh, OWU, uh, and he went with other students using one of our theory to practice grants. So he was able to get a grant to be able to pay for this travel, and they, ex they were um, studying the borderland between England and Wales on this 177 mile path uh, that divides the country. So, uh, there's unique elements and um, attributes to the land there, and they were one specifically to get a grant to be able to go do some research in that particular part of the world. Or Dr. Jason Heaster's chamber, and, uh, excuse me, chamber ensemble. Um, they did a travel learning class. Uh, they were they were already studying Baroque Italian composers and singing those works, and they thought, why not travel abroad and go to Italy and study in those footsteps? Um, so again, these are things that will continue to open up again. Um, I think that, uh, you know, right now, if things look different on campus, but again, you wanna think about these experiences because um, we, I think we're, we're, we're going to get ourselves back to a place where this is uh, back at play. Serena George uh, from the Midwest, um, she studied zoology and environmental studies, and this is actually a picture of her um, in uh, doing field research in Tanzania. She also went to Costa Rica, the Virgin Islands, um, another great example of that. And then certainly domestically too, uh, you know, the get real component, right? I think that students and families really appreciate the idea that uh, you're gonna be able to get experiences that get you into that first job. Uh, this is a picture of Leah Crawford who graduated last year. She had two summer internships in Southern California. One at Gray Matter Productions, which uh, you might recognize that tagline from uh, many shows that you watch on TV. And then this picture here is from Artists First, which is in Beverly Hills, California, where Leah tracked media, wrote promos, edited scripts, helped uh, run receptions, 
Uh, she really did it all. What, a, what an amazing experience. Or Sophia Achmed, um, she had an internship with uh, Citibank at their Global Consumer Banking and Technology Department, which is based in Dallas. Uh, and I think what was really remarkable with this is that it was set up with the help of OU alumnus Shadman Zafar. So uh, Shadman uh, is a, a graduate, he's an OU alum. He was really proud of the fact that um, he could bring students who are currently at OU uh, and give them those, you know, basically paying it back, paying it forward at the same time. I really like this story. Tom Dolan, he actually graduated two years ago. Uh, but while he was at OWU, he did our Wesleyan in Washington program, where uh, he went to DC for an entire semester. He was there with elected officials and think tanks and lobby groups. It's a pretty intensive program. You don't have to even be a poli sci major to do it. Uh, but I think what's really neat is that two years out of college, Tom now works in the US House of Representatives. Lane Wynn is, uh, he's a classic story of a student that really found his dream internship. He wanted to work at Facebook, and so he interned there two summers in a row and landed a job there as a software engineer right after graduating. So moving on, what are the most popular majors? What is OWU, no, uh, OWU known for? Uh, so we have, as I said, over 75 majors. The top five in terms of the number of students enrolled in those programs are uh, zoology, business, psychology, health and human kinetics, and politics and government. So what's interesting to me about that is that psychology is certainly a, a really strong, versatile liberal arts degree that can take you in a lot of different ways. Uh, but that also stands out to me that, you know, zoology, you can do STEM in the liberal arts. Uh, business, right? We're right near Fortune 500 companies in uh, Columbus, which is the second largest city in the Midwest. Um, Health and human kinetics. Maybe you're thinking about going on to med school, or you're thinking about teaching, or you're thinking about being a dietitian. Uh, lots of ways you can go there too. And then, of course, Columbus being the state capital, politics and government. Um, but we have twice as many majors as a lot of our peers uh, uh, when you're looking at small, uh, small liberal arts colleges. And you'll have time to change your major, right? So once you're admitted to OWU, I would say that as long as you declare your major by the end of sophomore year, you'll have plenty of time to still graduate on time. And oftentimes, these OWU connection experiences that we just heard about are what lead to discovering that major. You might also be like the nearly one third of our students who pursue multiple majors, right? So professors, coaches, they really support this. They'll help find ways for you to combine your many interests into OWU connection experiences and signature projects. And if I look at this list, um, I really appreciate that uh, students think outside the box. Some of these, sure, pre-law psychology, that makes a lot of sense. But think about like economics and theater. Somebody might uh, be a theater major and they're, they're actually not interested in being on stage. They're thinking about running the business operations or, or working in the marketing uh, office or ticket sales. Um, or maybe they are planning to be on stage, but they know that they're going to be work, working with agencies and, and agents and contracts, and they want to have that uh, business savvy. And so that's just one example of uh, how students can combine and tailor majors uh, to their needs. Another question I get is, how big are the classes at OWU? You know, am I really going to know my professors? You will. Uh, the average class size at OWU is between 17 and 20 students. A big class would be 30, uh, and many classes are smaller than that average. Uh, that's gonna help you build really strong interactions and, and connections with those faculty members. You know, think about it this way, they, they're, they've done research, they're published, uh, they're doing incredible things, but the reason that they teach at a liberal arts institution is because they love teaching, and, and their focus is to be teaching the undergrads at OWU. So, uh, you know, they have their PhD or their terminal degree, um, but they're there for you. They're accessible. You'll have their office hours. You'll have their contact information. I've even heard of students uh, who have been dog sitting uh, when their professor is on vacation. So what about the fun side? What do, what do students do on campus and how can I get involved? Um, you know, that is something that's, that has not changed uh, in the time of, of COVID is that our students are really engaged and, and interested and that it's a very strong community on campus. 
Um, and, and that, you know, a third of our students are involved in uh, multiple um, organizations. We have 100 different clubs and organizations to choose from. Uh, we do have both Greek life, we do have varsity athletics. Um, I think both of those are, are thriving and important parts of the campus community. Um, but if neither of those are of interest to you, there are a hundred different things to choose from. So they're certainly not uh, dictating the social scene on campus. I, I really like that students are interested in Ohio Wesleyan because of the diversity of students on our campus. And so the other thing that being in a small school like Ohio Wesleyan can do for you is that um, you can take advantage of these opportunities. Some of these, it, maybe it's the first time that you're even trying some of these, uh, these extracurriculars that you didn't have the opportunity for or the time for uh, in high school. And while you're supporting your friends and their activities, they will in turn be able to, to do the same uh, for you. Another question I, you know, is where am I going to live? Where am I, what am I going to eat? Uh, how's the food? Um, we are a residential campus. 85% of our students live on campus and they're there seven days a week. Uh, it's a place that students want to be and want to stay. Uh, and students live on campus all four years. Uh, we have a lot of options for students to be able to do that. So uh, knowing that we want students to be on campus, we've made campus a place that students want to live. Uh, we have residence hall options. This is a picture of Stuyvesant Hall, which is a beautiful uh, suite style type setup. Um, we have what are called small living units, which are houses that were built uh, by campus with students in mind. They're not old houses that have been retrofitted. These were houses that were built for students. Uh, they typically have a theme associated with them. So like living, learning communities. Uh, this picture that I'm about to show here uh, on the bottom are, is uh, Bradford Milligan Hall. That's going to open up in the fall next year. Uh, apartment setup, uh, a whole brand new uh, building full of apartments for upper class students. Uh, and then the picture on the top is our first year residence hall, Smith Hall, which just got a complete revamp. So it's one of the older buildings on campus. The outside still has that classic uh, collegiate look and feel to it but inside is completely different than what it used to look like. I would venture to say that if, uh, if there was an alum who lived at Smith um, and they went in there today, they might not even know their way through the building uh, because it's that different. Um, we added a, a new fitness room, a community room, a game room, multi-purpose room. Uh, my personal favorite, 24 seven dining. So no more vending machines at 1 a.m. You can get fresh food uh, all the time. And here's some more pictures just from around campus. The three houses here, this is, this is uh, they're not the only ones, but this is the row of those small living units, the houses, the uh, slews that we, that we talked about as well. So again, how about the food? What are the meal plans like? Um, well, I, the food's good. Uh, I, I eat there and I don't have to. Uh, it's small batch, it's locally sourced, it's fresh, it's 24 seven. We've had to adjust, um, the timing of the cafeteria in terms of how many people we can allow in at a time. Uh, and certainly the delivery of the food is slightly different, uh, you know, during the pandemic. Um, but what hasn't changed is, is that our staff is very responsive to suggestions and dietary restrictions. <clears throat> and that you have a lot of different meal plan options to choose from. So you can adjust up and down uh, accordingly, depending on what your individual needs are. Now we're going to talk about uh, the area around campus next, but I think what really stands out to me is that uh, our meal plan, our dining dollars can be used in off campus venues at restaurants that are voted on by students. Uh, so in this case, the Hamburger Inn down at the bottom left corner there, um, the fact that you could use your meal plan off campus, that really tells me the relationship that we have with the uh, community around us. Um, you know, on campus, you can use your dining dollars in the cafe, in, uh, in Bishop uh, Grill, which is like um, uh, the Boar's Head um, Deli right there, uh, our convenience store, and then Merritt Cafe, which is where you'll find our on-campus Starbucks. So it's not just the cafeteria, there's lots of places that you can use those dining dollars. 
what are what what is Delaware, Ohio, and Columbus like? You know, what do students do when they get off campus? Um, I think the best description of our location is small town charm and big city opportunities. So, you know, locally students like to enjoy the local state parks, get involved with the local organizations in Delaware County, uh, participate in downtown uh, Delaware events and parades. This is from 2019. That picture on the bottom right. Um, you know, and certainly there's internship possibilities right there within the city, within the county, or local nonprofits. Uh, we've seen lots of students who end up uh, interning or running their own startup right out of the De uh, Delaware County Entrepreneurial Center, which is this building on the bottom left. It's actually a countywide facility that's based on our campus for anybody who's interested in running their own business and being an entrepreneur. So again, here's here's maybe the the, the charm piece of that equation, right? Uh, getting out, uh, taking your folks out to eat, going to the Strand Theater for a show, uh, getting some coffee. And then of course, uh, what do students love about being around Columbus, right? There, there's the Columbus Zoo, there's events downtown in the Arena District in the short north. Uh, we have professional sports in town, the Blue Jackets hockey, Columbus Crew soccer, the Clippers baseball team. Uh, and then concerts and events are always coming through Nationwide Arena. Um, and if you like to shop like I do, uh, the Tanger Outlets is right down the street. The Polaris Fashion Place is one of the largest shopping commercial areas in the state of Ohio. Um, and those are all within a quick uh, trip from campus. Certainly internships uh, in Greater Columbus, that is uh, a huge uh, component from our Career Connection Office. Uh, you know, some of those are through faculty connections like Dr. Shayla Hankison, who's pictured on the bottom right. Um, and uh, again, you look at this list, right? Cardinal Health, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Nationwide, like these are, these are organizations that people are familiar with. So what's the profile of the OBU student body? You know, what are students like? Well, like I said, we're roughly 1,500 students and uh, representing, uh, I believe now we're up to 44 states uh, and 31 countries um, and a really diverse student body. Uh, however you want to break that down in whichever specific demographics or how you want to slice uh, the percentages, but I really appreciate that um, uh, students come to Ohio Wesleyan for that diversity. Uh, a really strong incoming class. Uh, last year was a, a 3.5. I think we're closer to a 3.6 now and roughly a 1,200. But I left those test score components up there. Uh, you should know that we are fully test optional. So we're going to talk about that as well. Um, but uh, but a, a, a strong class. So how do I apply for uh, admission? What, what's my first step? I'm excited that you're at this point, that you're thinking about that, that you're getting ready to do it, if not already done so. We do use the Common App. We also have our own online application, if that is easier for you. We use a number of important factors. Um, as I said, we are completely test optional. So that's why it's double asterisk. Um, if you do send them, we will read them. But if you um, were unable to take the test or you weren't able to retake it, if you weren't, uh, you know, excited about the score that you uh, that you first got, um, or or maybe you took it as many times as you thought you wanted to. Uh, you just don't think it's representative of of your best work. So uh, you don't need to send those. But what we will look at is grades and rigor uh, of the coursework that you chose, um, recommendation letters from uh, teachers and counselors, uh, extracurricular activities. We all understand that over the last six or seven months, activities have been diminished. So um, we've, we've all experienced this together. We do understand that that may be the case uh, and you won't be alone in that, nor will you be negatively impacted uh, by that. What I find is really useful and helpful uh, is that essay. So I would, I would take some time, spend some time with it, um, uh, treat it like you would a final paper for, uh, uh, you know, English test or something like that. Uh, don't submit it the same day that you wrote it, you know, sleep on it, look at it with fresh eyes, uh, think about, um, you know, does it make sense when you read it a day later? I know sometimes when I write something, I need some time to let it marinate and then I read it again, I think, no, I'm going to change that, uh, that phrase there, or I'm going to rearrange the order of my paragraphs. Um, so, so take some time with it. Um, 
It doesn't need to be a novel, but it's not a short answer either. So uh, just make sure whichever uh, topic you choose that you fully answer the question and that you're answering the question that you chose. So uh, as, if you can't tell, it's my favorite part of the application, primarily because it's really the place where a student's voice can be heard. So that said, uh, when do you have to submit? Well, we're going to talk about costs uh, next, but um, for those of you who are seniors, the, 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 free, the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA, actually just opened up a couple of weeks ago. So that's already available. Um, in terms of applying for admission, Ohio Wesleyan uses early decision, early action, and regular decision. So early decision is for students who uh, already know that Ohio Wesleyan is where they plan to enroll should they be admitted. So uh, they're, they already know where they want to go. They already plan to come to OWU. They just need to know that they're admitted uh, and they're making that commitment. That's early decision. Early action due December 5th, or excuse me, December 1st, that is for students that they're most excited to get that decision back, right? They, they would rather get that decision back first and then have to decide if they even need to fill out any more applications. They're just not willing to make that commitment right now. They want to just get that information back, get it back early uh, because they're most excited about uh, being admitted to OWU. Regular decision uh, can be thought of as our general admission pool. And while it does have a late deadline of March 1st, uh, I can tell you that the vast majority of our students, probably 95% or so, apply long before the holiday break. So uh, right now it's October 13th. If you're a senior, my guess is that you're going to have your application in, in the next month to uh, month and a half, maybe the next six weeks, something like that. Um, but the deadline is not until after that. I just think if you are at the point where you can apply, uh, there's no need to delay, right? You've already done the work. Now it's just about gift wrapping it and sending it off. Okay, so we talked about the FAFSA, but how much does it cost to attend OWU? And then let's talk about some scholarship opportunities, right? Uh, now, we froze tuition this year because we knew that, uh, that this was a rough year for a lot of uh, folks out there. Uh, but I think the part of this chart that's the most important to look is that uh, the average financial aid package was $43,393. That's not the out-of-pocket cost. Uh, that's not the cost of attendance. That's the average package that students earned uh, or were awarded through OWU or both, uh, which means this bottom number here, the average total, the average out-of-pocket cost is $16,000 for what amounts to a $60,000 education. So, uh, I mean, I, the math kind of stands for itself. That's a great deal. If you can uh, be anywhere near that average uh, out-of-pocket cost, um, that's a huge discount. That's a huge savings for an amazing education. How do we do that? Well, over 97% of our students receive scholarships and or financial aid. Uh, we talked about the average out-of-pocket cost. We have a generous scholarship program. Um, our academic merit scholarships start at $25,000 and work their way up from there. And the ones that we're talking about right now don't require any additional scholarship. So I mentioned that we're test optional. When it comes to uh, scholarship awarding, if you have at least a 3.6 GPA or higher on a four point scale, and we'll take the weighted GPA. So if you have at least a 3.6 or higher, uh, you are automatically qualified for the $30,000 scholarship and you will be awarded that amount. So there's no additional application. Uh, if you apply for admission and you are admitted and you have a 3.6 or higher on a four point scale, that's $120,000 over the course of four years. That's a guaranteed $30,000 scholarship. Uh, that's our Branch Rickey Opportunity Promise. Branch Rickey, uh, a very notable alum of OWU. Uh, he was on the baseball team when he was a student, went on to play professionally himself, uh, then became a manager and eventually uh, ran baseball teams, including uh, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Brooklyn Dodgers, where he, uh, he, he was the manager of the Dodgers when they signed Jackie Robinson to his first professional contract. So he always believed if you have the talent, you should have the opportunity. Uh, and that is why we've named our uh, $30,000 top tier scholarship, the Branch Rickey 
opportunity promise. So additional scholarships that you can apply for that do have an additional component, but they're also stackable. So these are in addition to the ones we've already talked to uh, talked about. Um, if you're involved in performing arts, right? Theater, dance, music, art, uh, there are some uh, potential uh, talent based awards there. If you are interested in coming to campus and participating in um, some scholarship competition weekends, those are the Schubert and the Wesleyan. Uh, and then if you're involved in community service, I would urge you to apply for our Meek Scholars where there are additional funds there as well. And then uh, the last question, top 10, right? Uh, what do students do after Ohio Wesleyan? Well, we've alluded to that a little bit. Um, this is Erin Cannon. She completed internships and research on accounting practices uh, in Australia during her time at Ohio Wesleyan. She landed a job as a corporate control accountant right out of college at Honda of America, where this picture was taken. And if you think about uh, the other outcomes we talked about, right? Raisa with the eight different OU Connection experiences, uh, Serena George, who traveled all over the globe and did veterinary medicine, uh, Tom Dolan, who ended up in D.C. at the House of Representatives, Lan, who had the great experience at Facebook and now works there full time. Um, it's probably no surprise then that over 95% of our uh, students are employed or in grad school within the first six months after they graduate. Over 80% of them are in their field uh, that they chose. Um, very few percent, but you know, some of that uh, extra percentage is because students might intentionally take a gap year after they graduate. Um, but essentially, everybody who goes to OWU is doing what they want to do when they graduate. Uh, we also have very high placement rates into med school, law school, vet school. Uh, we're talking upwards of 90% and above, uh, oftentimes twice the national average. We are a member of the Colleges That Change Lives, and um, uh, that is a collection of small liberal arts colleges across the country. Um, uh, originally uh, came about from a book that was written in the 1990s uh, by a gentleman named Lauren Pope, and he was the uh, educational uh, editor for the uh, New York Times. And so uh, when this book was published, um, Ohio Wesleyan was on that uh, original list, and we always have been since. Uh, and I think that's, I think that's really indicative of who we are. So we're proud to be a part of that. Uh, I would urge you to maybe take a look at um, some of the programming that OWU might be involved with through uh, CTCL. Other ways you can connect um, with us is. Um, Number one, I mentioned that we are available for uh, campus visits and campus tours. So I'm gonna start at the end, number six. Um, we would love to have you come visit. I know that uh, uh, there's, there's a wide variety of comfort level when it comes to people's uh, thoughts about, um, you know, getting in the car and visiting a campus and crossing state lines. But uh, uh, that said, we would love to take you around on a campus tour and our admission office is open six days a week uh, to be able to do that with you. Uh, if right now you're more comfortable taking the virtual tour, that's easy, owu.edu slash virtual tour. Um, and you can also find lots of other different uh, offerings there too. So we have a virtual tour that's been uh, pre-recorded, but we also have some that are done live. So if you would really like a virtual tour, with a live person on the other end, like, uh, like we're doing right now, you can do that. Uh, slash discover is for looking up uh, majors, programs, other student life opportunities. Um, you can really build your own custom view book uh, in that way. Uh, Bishop Banter is uh, our podcasting. So if you're into podcasts, you can do that. Uh, meet your counselor. Again, I, I'm Rob, and uh, if you're if you are, um, in Indiana, then it's me. Um, I also work with students from Illinois, Wisconsin, Missouri, uh, Kansas, and uh, Iowa, and the Dakotas. So if, uh, if you're anywhere in the, uh, the Midwest, uh, including, of course, Indiana, um, and thanks again to Indiana ACAC, um, then I will be your admission counselor. Uh, we have our chat uh, all the time, so 
if you're going through this information and uh, you have a question, but you're not ready to pick up the phone or it's after hours and email's not really your thing, you can just uh, submit a question to our chat and you'll be able to get answers very quickly uh, from any number of uh, my colleagues um, on campus. So again, you can do this at any time. You can always schedule uh, an appointment. I did see that somebody had a question um, about that. Um, I, I would say look, look up your admission counselor, but you can reach us all the time. I think uh, another thing that I would promote to you is to uh, take advantage of opportunities like this, whether it's some of the upcoming StriveScan events, whether that's other Indiana ACAC events, uh, events through your individual high school or community. Um, uh, take advantage of some of the, uh, the national goings-ons with uh, NACAC. And then once you've narrowed it down to a handful of schools, I would say take advantage of some of the individual um, offerings of the institution. So something that's not on this slide, but I would urge you to check out is our Bishop Plus events. Um, we have events like this that we have both pre-recorded and that we do live. Um, and they break down very different uh, array of topics. So anything from a, an entire session just about building an essay to um, you know the schools of Ohio. If, if you're looking next door and you're looking at a number of schools, you can work with us in a number of our peer institutions. But I would urge you to do that too. So that's just uh, owu.edu uh, slash bishop plus. So I would check that out uh, as well. I don't see any other questions, and I know we just have a few um, uh, minutes left to go, but at this point, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and if there are no other uh, questions, I appreciate uh, your time and considering Ohio Wesleyan. Again, I am Rob Walton, and uh, um, please uh, check out more at www.owu.edu. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to McKinsey to uh, help us uh, wrap up the program. All right. Thank you so much, Rob. Um, just to let you know, once you do, or once the presentation does end here in a couple of minutes, there will be a quick survey that pops up for you. It's only four questions, so if you could please take the time to complete that. I know that Indiana ACAC, as well as Rob, would really appreciate your feedback. One last reminder to sign up for more sessions so you can learn about more um, amazing schools throughout the country. And again, this was recorded. The recording will be posted on Indiana ACAC's website. That is inacac.org slash virtual college exploration. So make sure to take a look there um, within the next couple of weeks. And that's all that we have for you all tonight. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week.